Okay, we got the recording in progress, and uh, let me go live on Facebook, and we'll be ready to go here. Okay, hello there, everybody. There we go. There we go. We're uh, live streaming out there, and everything's going good. I'm putting in my earphones. Isn't that nice? And uh, we should probably let some of the people in who are here already. Uh, let's see here. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bum. Okay, where is it? Uh, where do we start here? Oh, admit all. Here we go. There we go. They've changed some of the things on Zoom here, so I have to figure it out. Okay, there we go. There we go. There's Charlene Solis. Hello, Charlene. Hi, Alex. How you doing? Good. Uh, How are you? Fine, good. Francine Witt, uh, uh, Francine, put your face a little more in the center. There we go. There you go. <laughs> and of course, the lovely and attractive uh, Andrew Deutsch is here. And Len LaFrisco, I don't know where Len is, but uh, he's probably here somewhere. Oh, Marjorie just came in here. And uh, oh, is there somebody I've forgotten? I think it's Edward Berger. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cartoon voices. We love them. Yeah. Anyway, hello, everybody. How are you? Good. How are Paula you? won't be here. Oh, what? Paula, Paula won't... won't be here. She had uh, some dental work done. I, oh, well, she had dental work done last week. Well, I guess her dental will put all of us. Yeah. 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 Well, we wish her well with her teeth. She's listening, I'm sure. I'm sure she is. Hi, Paula. Yeah. What kind, what kind of work is she having? Do you know? I don't know. I didn't go into detail. I mean, you know, we've, I, I'm into what extensive dental work is all about. Although, you know, basically my extensive dental work has been, I have, how many have, I have four implants now. That's about $20,000 worth of teeth so far. Yeah. You must be 230. <laughs> no, I know that that was a joke that Albert Reynoso always used to pull on me. But that's a great joke. That, I said I have to go to the dentist. And he used to it say, "Never Please, gets old." Tooth hurty. <laughs> but it never gets old, Alex. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out your name in the snow. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> anyway, uh, hello, Len. How are you? There's good. How are you? Good. Uh, Lynn the Frisco, and hopefully we'll get some other people in here soon. Mm. Well, we're not good enough for you, or what? <laughs> well, well, one of us. Well, to be, uh -oh. honest, to be honest, be honest, no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh well. Oh, but that I, I won't be happy till we have twenty people here. Although that would be too many. That's See, too I, many. I find that anything above oh fifteen is un unwieldy kind of although some of the people here don't talk that much so it you know it kind of works out uh and marjorie's here what's for dinner tonight marjorie it's a surprise no i saw it already it's like <laughs> jumbo shells with spinach in them one of my real favorites sounds <laughs> right will you stop ordering from what is that a fresh direct they're getting too predictable Okay, find another place to call. I will. I'll work on it. I mean, if you if you're not going to cook, at least find good places to get the food from. I try. Yeah, she got some. Uh, what were they? Chicken fillets last night from <laughs> uh, terrible. Are you, are you sure that was Stu Leonard's? It was Stu Leonard's. Oh my God, Stu Leonard's it's terrible. Better than that. These chicken fillets were in what were they in a teriyaki sauce? First of all, they were hard as a rock. Well, that's what they I'm saying like, is they broke a knife I was cutting them with. That's how bad. Like <laughs> and so I'm sitting there trying to eat these things, and I'm trying to pretend like because it's kind of like you don't want the one good thing about ordering from Fresh Direct or Stu Leonard's or whatever is if the food sucks, you can't blame your wife. So she can't be upset by it. Do you get upset by it when I say I didn't like it? Uh, no, I didn't cook it. Because you didn't cook it. Yeah. I just got to let everybody know that I stopped cooking about two years mm -hmm. ago. I retired from it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, which is kind of good because when she said, I'm going to make soup tonight. 
and then she would make a pot. This I can't even put it in the camera. <laughs> Like well, you know what it was? Army when, kettle, you know. When I was single, especially when I lived in D.C., I'd have a dinner party Saturday or Sunday night, and I'd make a soup or a stew from scratch, and I'd make a big pot. Yeah, but then I can eat it all week. I wasn't <laughs> eating out of a can. It was all fresh food, and that was my life. I didn't mind it. Yeah, here's what the rest Alex, of the week is like. What's on? What, 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 are we what are we having for dinner, dear? Uh, soup. <laughs> okay, Tuesday. What are we having for dinner tonight? Soup. <laughs> this went on till Friday, and I'm sorry. Well, I, I'm, good, I'm good for that's warmed what over made soup. For, Alex. I'm good for warmed over soup a second day, and after Not that, me. after that, you're a lousy wife. No, after <laughs> that, you're on your own. What happened to the old days, women? We have some Those old here. days are gone, yeah. Alex. Yeah, yeah they're, they're way they're, long gone. They're were you married? Gone. Were you married a woman because you wanted a chef? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, Mar Marjorie, did you know you married the soup Nazi? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just so. moved to New York. So. <laughs> and then when I cook, if I cook, she always goes, "Oh eh, well, that wasn't too good. I I could do that better." I never say that. Fuck you, Alex. I have never, ever oh, said it. <laughs> The once in a blue moon that he cooks, I have to praise him for days. Wait, 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 wait. Which Fuck I me. do. Fuck me. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> All right. So I will turn this podcast around. <laughs> well, we just got demonetized. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck, fuck, fuckity fuck. <laughs> Marriage in your late age, eighties. No, but I. Uh, Marriage uh, when you're old. But you, you always kind of give me a bad time when I cook. You know. I love your ribs. That's the only thing you cook are ribs. Well, I I cook ribs. I just other, other stuff I can cook. Yeah. I, 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 I that wonderful chicken, that wonderful chicken dish I do with the balsamic right, vinaigrette. Again. My pleasure. The kitchen is open, Alex. I know. <laughs> you could go in there anytime and cook whatever you want. You realize our stove now has dust on it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's all true. Yeah. Well, I figured when I married you, at least I was marrying a great cook. Well, you know, when he wouldn't eat my soup more than two days, I said, fuck it, why am I cooking? I mean, I don't have to cook a different meal every night. I just have to eat something good and fresh and healthy. Wow. Wow. Well, it's become a family fight this week. This is not the kind <laughs> no. of show, the kind of happy show that we try to do here on. My darling, Monday. my love, please, the kitchen is open. Use it anytime you want. <laughs> <laughs> I'll set the dishes. I'll put the dishes out. At my age, I haven't long to live. I think you probably should, like, you know. Oh, boy. <laughs> if you know anyone that wants cook supplies or cookbooks, I have plenty of them. I want to do She wants to give away her cookbooks. You see that? To a nonprofit. But you used to, used to be so proud at your meals and the cooking you did. I did. Which I have to admit was mediocre. And... Ooh. 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 Oh, 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 oh. He will oh, never boy. see another meal in this house yeah. <laughs> ever. Yeah, but it, her idea now is she goes to Fresh Direct and they send her something in a, in, in aluminum plastic. But you heat it up for half an hour and you eat it, and it's yeah. good. Yeah, well, so, yeah. Hey, Alex, the kitchen is open to you. Please, <laughs> thank you. I'm so happy. Well, I can't do that anymore because. Who knows how much longer I have to live and I don't want to do it cooking. Oh, oh here God. We go. Here oh. we go. Everybody get your violins out. Uh. <laughs> hey, listen, there's a possibility I have leukemia. Okay. Hey, there's a possibility we all have something. Okay. Yeah, well, you've got grouchy. That's what you've got. <laughs> <laughs> Just like... Jeez. Anyway. Uh, hello. Well, let's talk about something fun. <laughs> let's say hello to John Ewing, who's with us today. Hello, John. Good afternoon, kids. Yeah, how you doing? <clears throat> doing well, thank you. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Um, 
Uh, uh, let's see what what else is happening. What else is happening? Anybody... What, uh, what do you think about uh, um, Richard Lewis? Uh, we you have him on your show. Oh, it was so sad. Well, yeah. Uh, I used to have Richard Lewis on my show a lot in San Francisco. I thought so, yeah. Whatever he was in town. He was a lovely man. It's, lovely. It's funny. Alex and I were watching Curb, the latest yeah. Curb. Yeah. Uh -huh. He was doing it. He and, didn't right. look well. He did not look well. He didn't look good. Terrible. He did not he he look good. He waiting to die. Yeah, he yeah. looked just terrible. I mean, he died of a heart attack. So it being looking bad before you die is not necessarily a sign of a heart attack. Yeah, no, but he had other stuff too. But he had a lot of other issues, but it was a heart attack that killed him. I don't know that, you know, he had what was it, the Parkinson's? Parkinson's side yeah. effect of Parkinson's isn't a heart attack. I don't believe Yeah, but all your all your things are lower. Yeah. All my things are lower. Well your defenses, your defenses, your yeah. immune. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess right. you know it, it's uh, it's sad. He he was what seventy seventy six seventy six. I thought seventy seven, but around there. Yeah, uh, nice guy, nice guy. Yeah, just another yeah. one who died that I knew that, that you know. Now it's another less per uh, person that I I don't have on my roster. You know. It's not um, like you're talking to him every week, Alex. Well, no, it wasn't like I was talking to him every week. But, you know, these are people I know. These mm -hmm. are people knew, that you knew. That, that I knew. knew. They knew quite well. And they die. And I'm going, what's happening here? You know, like I said to somebody the other night, I was, I was talking about my, my current chance of a certain condition that I might have. Oh, my God. I don't believe this. <laughs> Wait a minute. And I said, I said, I'm 84 years old. What the but hell do I talk expect? about it during the week? You don't have to bring it up on Monday. Well, one day I'm not going to be in the square up here and you're going to wonder well, where I am. am. And it's because I'm going to because I'm going to be dead. OK. <laughs> And the only person know. out of this crowd that's not going to miss me is you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> next episode of the Bickersons. We yeah. you. <laughs> I hate it when mom and dad fight. Yeah, mom mm. and dad. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. That way I can get away with stuff. Oh, look who's there. <laughs> Mandy just joined us. Hello, Hello, Mandy. How are you? I'm good. How are you? You must have had stuff going on in the office because you're <laughs> crazy. It's tax time, Alex. It's time of year, yeah. It, it is tax time, isn't it? Yeah, but it's also uh we had to fire somebody in January, so I'm just swamped. Oh, I see. They fired somebody, but they didn't replace them, is what happened. Not yet. We're, we're they're looking at people right now. Thank God. Yeah. So you had to split up. All well, it, 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 I'm things. looking at people right now, and I'm not hiring <laughs> anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I may be interested. What's the job? <laughs> <laughs> selling selling cookbooks. Yeah. <laughs> how's everything? Down the buzzer's in... ringing. Uh -oh. How's how's everything down in Georgia? Pretty good. Yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. yeah. It, it seems. I'll tell you. I, I've been to Atlanta once, and it was a lovely city. Just a lovely city. When? <laughs> uh, about 25 years ago, but you know. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little different. I mean, it's still lovely. They've done a lot since, because after the Olympics and everything, but. Yeah. It's very crowded. Yeah, it, it, since I left, I don't know how many peach tree streets they've added. Yeah. <laughs> it's just very, there's a lot of traffic now, like really bad, like well, LA. It's, it's in all cities, all cities. But you yeah, know but what it, I saw? it used to be more manageable. Now it's all day. So yeah. I've talked about how I just don't know if I can drive anymore because it's been a while since I've driven. And all of a sudden I see these videos on YouTube of the latest uh, software for the Tesla to be automatic driving. Mm -hmm. And it's perfect. It's perfect. I mean, I could literally mm -hmm. buy a Tesla and not have to drive. I could just say, go to Costco, and then I just sit back and watch it take me there. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. If you, if you, right. if you, in some of these videos, they did in San Francisco, so I know the streets, and I know where they're going, and it's just amazing. And they stop at every stop sign, and 
you know, if somebody suddenly jets out in front of them to come to a halt, you know, I mean, just they finally got the software uh, mat really good. So I don't think there are going to be a lot of accidents with those things. I don't trust them. Yeah, you yeah know, I don't either. would never show you the videos yeah. to mislead you to think that he had a great product. As no, no, these are just clothes. people who bought Teslas who take videos of them using the automatic. Oh, okay driving thing and they're amazed by the latest software because they said the old software they had certain problems with there was this one guy who had a, a a gate to his community that opens when you come up on it but he said it didn't work very well with the old software with new software it sits there waits the door the gate opens it knows when to go through i mean it just amazing just amazing. And I sat there waiting for it to hit something or to make some major mistake. And the only thing that seemed to be a problem is the people in back of you were honking like crazy because you were going at a reasonable speed. You were going at the speed limit, yeah, speed limit. Okay. Because that's what it does. It doesn't go over the speed limit. And um, these people were kind of a little like, move your ass okay there was one case where they pulled up the car pulled up right and there were some people going across the street so it stopped and then the people who were crossing the street kind of waved at the guy and went go ahead and the car wouldn't go ahead okay and they were getting frustrated with him come on go ahead damn it and he goes, no, you cross the, street. the car is saying, basically, you cross the street first and then I can go. So somehow, I think on cars that are automatic like this, there should be some kind of note on the car, something on the car that lets people as an indicator to people that it's autonomously being driven. And then I think I'm electric. <laughs> I think Mercedes is doing that. They're putting a certain color light on it that says, hey, I'm a self-driving car. Yes, yeah, just something, that, whether it's a yellow uh, light that lights up or something like that, to tell people this is an automatic car, and the reason it stopped is because it wants you to walk across the street. The other thing with those things is you can't hear them coming. You know, they're very Well, of course, quiet. in Teslas, you can't hear. No. Yeah. You, put, you have to put a, a playing card in the spokes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think they actually sell something. They sell something that makes it sound like there's an engine. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is it is it true if you get the red one, it runs over immigrants? <laughs> I, I heard that somewhere. I don't know what. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, uh, uh, John lives out in California, as does Len, uh, as does well nobody else here. Me, uh, Charlene. Uh, oh yeah, Charlene. Yeah. I hear in Charlene, uh, Charlene, and I uh, hear in California, there Teslas are everywhere. They're they're everywhere. They're everywhere. <laughs> Here, I know that. There's a lot. Of oh, you got a lot of Teslas down in uh, Atlanta. Yes, lots. See, the, the reason I don't think we have that many here in New York City is because there's no place to charge them. Mm -hmm. you know, like if I lived here, and let's say I had a garage in the apartment building, which we do, we could have. Then but, they would have chargers there. Well, uh, the I'm sorry, the bells ringing. This would be more car. important than somebody at the door. They're, they're dropping off your Tesla. What? They're putting in they're putting charges in virtually every parking lot here in California. They're everywhere. Well, Same they're, here. Same because you've got so many goddamn Teslas. Yeah. It'll be well, interesting when the hydrogen cars come out, how quickly the electrics go away. I hope so, because I don't get it. Because first of all, electric in California is ridiculously expensive. And and number two is in the summertime. The grid goes down, you know, and Texas is even worse. Let yeah. me ask you this question, though. When you go and you use a, a charger at a, a parking lot or something like that, do they charge you for that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you put a credit card in. Yeah. And so they charge you for the electricity. Of course. It's cheaper than gas, but they charge you. And you got to sit there for a while. If they made the cars right, right. there's a new company that did, the batteries wouldn't be part of the car. So you'd pull into a place that dropped the battery, plug in a new one and go like a power tool and you'd yeah, pay yeah. a yearly battery fee. But for some yeah. reason, the car companies didn't, didn't want to become universal with that system. But well, uh, that would anybody, have been the wise move. Does anybody you know how many double A's that thing takes? <laughs> they're, they're, I, they're, they're D batteries. 
<laughs> Actually, they are yeah. these. Uh, they are batteries that are strapped together, aren't they? Yeah, the whole the whole frame of the car has batteries strapped to them. But there's if they had done it with a cartridge system so that it would plug in and plug out, you'd pull through and and be able to continue your drive, not sit in a parking lot for 45 minutes. Because the worst part of that is then you have to talk to other people who own Teslas. Well, there's a <laughs> there's a Chinese car. The Chinese industry has an electric car. And their electric car, we saw it the other day, does have one of those things where you pull into a place, it pulls yeah. out the old battery, puts in another one. Yeah, that's how they should be. And that way the batteries can get maintained and get much longer life because mm -hmm. they can discharge before they recharge. There's a whole there's a whole missing piece of technology because of the way that they came out with them in the first place. Well, I understand that, uh, t that uh, Musk was against hydrogen until recently, and now he says they're working on a hydrogen Tesla. How cheap is hydrogen? It's not yet, but they're working on it. Yeah, but how cheap is hydrogen? It, it's it's the new processes for creating it are going to be significantly cheaper. So today's price isn't that important. Just water, isn't it? Yeah, but there's a yeah, but it takes a lot it, of energy it takes to a lot, you know, right. break hydrogen out of the water. You know, yeah. it's interesting that years ago when they first started making cars and Ford was making the Model T and so on, there was a very famous car called the Stanley Steamer. Mm -hmm. No, not the rug cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking of. A car called the St Stanley Steamer. And the Stanley Steamer was a water operated engine. It was worked on steam. Yeah, you had, to, you had to have energy though to boil mm -hmm. the water. You're right. You're yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. But but nevertheless, uh hydrogen is it, hydrogen is a very good idea. Uh the the problem that I have it's with electric wonderful. Is, hmm? what are we gonna say, Len? Are you gonna say oh, it's, just a, it's very plentiful in the universe, but it's hard to uh it's hard to extract it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, because I'm uh, what I the only thing that ever bothered me about electric automobiles is that you know you can only go so far on a charge and then you have to go somewhere and charge it. Where if I had to put gas in to go that far, it would take a, per, a small percentage of the time it takes to charge it. I think you can, can you how long can you how long does it take to charge these things? Anybody have an electric car here? Have to ask Brian. I guess I'm asking the wrong bunch of people then. <laughs> hey, uh, Jeff, wait, wait, turn on you. You're on mute. You're on mute. You're You're on mute. mute. <laughs> okay. okay. As far as uh, the car that I have, it has a regular gas and a battery also. Well, that's a that's a hybrid. Yeah. Yeah. So then, and my son has one that's. Uh, I think it's yeah. it's all electric, and they it's a, it's it's for the office, so they always leave it there at night, mm -hmm. and they charge it, it in, and then, and they have their own little charge system, so it's easy system for them, and it works forever. Yeah, but let's say let's say you're not you not a business, you're me. Yeah. And let's say I like to drive a lot. I liked it when I was in California. I had a girl. Go to California. I had a girlfriend who checked my speedometer and wondered why I was spending so much time driving around. Who else was I seeing? That's how paranoid she was, right? And it was just I like to drive places. I would go over to Marin County and then I go somewhere else and go somewhere else. And finally, you know, I'd, I'd eat up two hundred miles without even thinking twice about it. So if I had an electric, I'm not paying attention to how much electricity I've got left. You know. And by the way, when those things say zero, they're not really zero. Did you know that? Uh they they actually whoops. I gotta go back here. Uh they um they actually uh, they I saw a couple of things on YouTube where they drove these things till they ran out of power or they ran down to zero and they mm -hmm. still could go about another 10% so that you could get somewhere and charge them, you know, but I don't know if I could live with that. 
you know. The it, problem it, is, it, though, if the battery runs down on them, they only have that one big battery pack. Yeah. And so you, you can't unlock the car. <laughs> you can't even unlock it. You got to keep one in your trunk already to change. Yeah, it, it's it's a problem. Uh, people have been locked out of their cars because the the battery's dead. <laughs> it'd be nice if you could buy a battery in your car. It'd, it'd be nice if you could buy a battery you put in the trunk, and he keeps right. charging the battery when you're not using it from this yeah. battery that's in the trunk. And that's mm -hmm. the, you know. So he, how about how oh, about solar on the roof? That'll work. Solar mm. on the roof. That's a nice idea. Mm -hmm. um, I think that. Um, but in all these, you have to have a home. I think I, would get, apartment. I think I would get a hybrid only because that that's a good idea. You know, you have gas that's charging the battery when it goes. You're always electric until you need power. You always have something. Yeah, you always have something, and and it also is then when it when you're running on the gas, uh, it's charging the hybrid battery. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. hybrids always seem like a better idea hello mike chisholm gee we haven't seen you for a while my friend mm -hmm. how are you and i've missed it i've missed you guys every monday i apologize for not have been here i, I i'm good thank you i'm very very busy but very very good mm -hmm. it's very nice to see everybody here and some new faces that i haven't met before so. yes john is Love a new face <clears throat> marjorie that's not a new face she just grew older since you saw her <laughs> that's, that's absolutely true Margin, it's the button, and you can put her in your pocket. Never say anything otherwise. Uh, I also don't know Francine either. Nice to meet you, Francine. Francine, Witt. yeah, she's she's with us too. Authoress, Francine Witt, and poet. You're a poet too. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, happen to be an author myself. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. kind of a pamphlet. Is it? Yeah. Well, let's see that again. Hmm. Let, now turn it sideways so I can see the oh, spot. The see, spot. it's my wife wrote one half of it and I wrote the other half of it. Now let's see the side. It's well, no, that is, no, that's a book. No. That's a book. It's a book. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah. What? What did you say? Uh, what did you say, Francine? No, I just said, yeah. <laughs> it oh, was okay. Book. Yeah, it's not a pamphlet. Has no. it been translated to American English for us? Nope. <laughs> All the color has used. It's all, in the... it's all in Canadian. It's all in Canadian. <laughs> yep. The word color appeared 48 times in the book, and it had a U every single time. Really? <laughs> no, I just made that up, but I'm sure it did, though. <laughs> they, they spell color with a U up there? We do. We, uh, yeah, color has a U, and, and, and a few others that are like that. Honor uh, sometimes has also been spelled with a U. Well, I don't know. Why can't English-speaking countries get together? I don't know. You're the why why is it that... C L O U R is British? It's Canadian, but here it's C O L R. O R. We're yeah. the Outlanders, not them. Yeah. Yeah, there's well, more of us. But who's right and who's wrong? We are. Well, we're right, of course. Both right. I don't think there's any U in color. It's call R, right? Not we also don't say W X Y Z up here either. Z is not Z up here. Z. Mm -hmm. Z. Yeah. Barrel that came out in the eighties that everyone loved was a Z twenty eight, not a Z twenty eight. Well, Z, I like kind of like Z. That's 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 all right, you know. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to think what else you do differently up there. Well, of course, we know about Thanksgiving. That 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 thing. That, you're ridiculous <laughs> about that. You're full of crap on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Early harvest, my friend. Early harvest. When is it? October. 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 Second right. Monday in October usually, yeah. Ours and it's is, on a huh? It's on a Monday as well. Really, ours is on a Thursday. Mm -hmm. Always on a Thursday. I think I think Alex, it was in like the 1700s. They did a thing in the states called the spelling reform. It was a Noah Web the Webster people simplified American English, and that's when all the words got changed. You know, the thing that part of the of, independence from England in the 1700s. Marjorie and I were discussing this the other day. Why Americans could never go over to the metric system? Because we're too lazy. Yeah. <laughs> you use the metric system in Canada, don't we you? We tried it around the same time that we switched, right? Like, I was a little young for that. My dad told me about what when he remembered in the 70s when it changed. Didn't you guys try to? <laughs> They the put it on a a measuring bit. cup. Yes, Any type of measuring, you saw both the old and the new. 
And mm. Americans are just so spoiled. They refuse to, to change. I have a All funny... Here, 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 um, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mandy, <laughs> Mandy. Oh, thank you. Okay. I just didn't want to interrupt. Sorry. Um, my, I have a funny little thing. My dad was so big into the metric system. He joined some kind of club or group. This was way before the internet. But he was in some kind of internet cl or club and all the people in it were like Canadian. <laughs> and he got to be really good friends with those people that live in Saskatchewan, I guess. I mean, yeah. and he, they, my parents drove up there, visited these people, like got to be really good friends with this all because he loved the metric system and he measured everything by the metric system and none of nobody else did. Just he did. <laughs> it was hilarious. A, it was your father... Weird. Your father yeah, loved that about him. It was so funny. Well, I mean, we, I, I think if I remember correctly, we were so going to the metric system that we actually mm -hmm. had a de drop dead date for l losing the, the uh, old. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and, and it like that day came and went and nobody, yeah. nobody. Yeah. And here's, I think that when they... he was preparing, like he was like, okay, I'm going I'm to learn this. I'm going to prepare. And then it didn't happen. And he was just, but he just kept using it the rest of his life. He didn't give a crap. Here's where they went wrong. Alex. They had just told men that seven inches is actually 177 millimeters. Everybody mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Bragging men rights. Men only wish. Bragging rights. <laughs> so I lived I lived with the metric system for years when I lived in South America. And, and it uh, the only part that doesn't make sense is the temperatures. It's <clears throat> Fahrenheit, uh, 60s and 70s, and those make sense to us. Whereas the difference between like 25 and 27 is drastic. It Except doesn't... water freezes at zero. Yeah, Which but, but the, the difference because of the span of the numbers, zero oh, to 40 in, in Celsius is 32 to 105 in yeah. Fahrenheit. So but doesn't boil water at 100 degrees and, and, uh, and, and water freeze at zero? I think that's how it's... Yeah, that's how it's set up. I think that's why it's based on... Everything's based on 10, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah a kilo a kilo yeah. is one liter of water i think it is well here's my the elementary education pounds, is though. really really paying off right here i love this here's where we're really wrong okay is yeah, that we have a here. we have a uh, uh the measuring system based on 12s yep. in mm -hmm. other words it's 12 inches to a to a foot it's yep. you know yep. and uh 12 just doesn't make sense no. You know, and I agree with the, with anyone else in the world who feels that, you know, 10 should mean something. <clears throat> yeah, that so, was always meant. He's like, I don't understand. It's so much easier. So he would he tried to teach my kids. I mean, my kids learned a little bit about it. But, you know, it is it is supposedly much easier. If you you're military by it, don't, don't they? What? Like how, 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 many, how, how, how many how many how many kilometers is a mile? Like uh, 1.4, I think. I think no. It's, no, it's 2.2, I think. No, no. It's, uh, but there uh, are 1.6 kilometers per mile. I think. There you go, 1.6. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So. But we use it for like our sodas and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 The sodas, yes. And now our, if you look at any soda like this one, no, this said 12 fluid ounces on it. And then next yeah. to it, Next to it, it has uh, what uh, something five hundred and two point three milliliters. When they're, milliliters. When, they're, when they're fluid ounces, is that because it can't decide if it's male or female? <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying that in measuring we use pronouns? <laughs> yes, pronouns and anti nouns. Mm -hmm. Whether you're for or against them. <laughs> anti nouns is, is yeah. anti nouns. Oh, I see. I just, I get <laughs> anti yeah yeah well part of canada as i, I remember i'm going to switch over it's to they still Jeopardy. drink uh they use uh french mm -hmm. in canada yeah. Oh, yeah our cereal boxes one side is english the other side is french yeah. oh okay all right and the milk okay. cartons what, what they have canadians or americans on their lot <laughs> Who are, you, who are you playing against there on Jeopardy? I think with all these trivia questions, I should switch sets. 
<laughs> Who are you competing against? I don't know. Some random rando I found on the internet. <laughs> oh boy. You're so much fun. Um I think, I think there's some hmm? I think there's some some parts of South America that you speak English. Only Belize. Belize and there's a small country, one of the two Guyanas is British. They they speak English. Belize is and Belize, Belize, Belize. And, and English English Guyana. And Belize uses American money. Belize. Yeah. 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 I don't Belize know if this country the British stole from Guatemala. The only problem with any of that is you have to go to Belize. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. You think Belize it was beautiful? I was completely I found it so dull, it was amazing. Uh, if you're at the oh, beach side of it, it's gorgeous. You know, you know how Belize became a country? The uh, uh take my the, wife, the, Belize. The Guatemalan government went to England and said, We need help building highways. And the British said, We'll build the highways for free, but we want this little piece of land so that we can have a colony called Belize. So the Guatemalan government gave them the piece of land and the British said, Okay, we're not building a highway, but thank you. Well, you know what they say down there here today, Guatemala. Oh. Um, I don't know if it counts or not. John Giller just messaged me 12 months in a year as well. I don't think that's the same thing, though, is it? <laughs> 12 yeah, months in a year? Met a metric year. 10, 10 months. There's no such thing as a metric year. Well, the year <laughs> amps go to 11, the year goes to 12. Didn't they figure out a way that we could have even months every... Oh, I know how they were going to do it. The lunar calendar, I think. No, but you could have every month be like 30 days yeah okay and that at the end of the year mm. you would have an extra day and you would right. get like earth day or whatever day it's not a not a day day it's its own special uh, Galip day. Uh, extra five days extra five days is that it yeah because there's so many days well, well, that was like five divided by 12 is like 30 and a half yeah 30 point <laughs> But you know how that would screw up people if we went to that and they were uh, holiday. like I was born on December 18th. What would I suddenly have been born on? Yeah. You know, they'd have to adjust for that. I mean, it would drive people nuts. So, well, Mike, Mike, weren't you married on Leap Day? Yeah, we just celebrated an anniversary, our, uh, technically our, our third one, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, 29th. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it, yeah, the only trouble, what was it they said on Saturday Night Live? The only trouble with uh, with leap year is that means an extra day of Black History Month. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I love the that, dynamic. I think I'll leave that one alone. A lot of, a lot of <laughs> crap on SNL, but I love the dynamic between Che and Joe's. Oh, they have, oh, they're the, good. They're really that's good. the only thing good, good left yeah. left on that show that's any good. That show, absolutely large, yeah. you can watch every week for a year and never laugh once. Did you guys yeah, talk about the news? The news is the, news the, is the only thing we watch. Yeah. What? What? Did you, what? Did you, what did you say? Did you guys talk about Shane Gillis when he was on Who? last week? Shane Why? Gillis, the comic that was on a couple of weeks ago. Did anybody? Did that come up on that show? I saw him. I have no idea who he is, but I saw him on there. Who was it? Uh, he's a huge stand-up. His name is Shane Gillis. And he hosted SNL a couple of weeks ago. And he came and did he did his stand-up. And uh I thought it was hysterical. Um, but a lot of uh, a lot of folks were up in arms about it. I've <clears> never <throat> heard of him. He's he's very, very, very big comedian. You know what happens? Why, is why he, were they I, up in arms? He, uh well right. he did, of uh he, he has uh he has family members who have down syndrome and so he crafted what i thought was a very very clever way of integrating that um but i mean a lot of people were offended by it but he's he's one of these guys where it's like well this is my family and it's true and they're real observances and yeah. uh so so that was part of it and then there was a couple other things as well that you know what um, happens i'll tell you where i miss out now you know, because I used to be Mr. Comedy, right? So I knew everything that was going on in comedy. And now there are comedians I never heard of. And what happens is they got a great agent and they go into Netflix or into uh, Amazon Prime or 
over to Max or whatever, and they convince them to let them do a comedy special. And they usually get it because doing a comedy special is a pretty cheap deal compared to producing any other kind of TV show, okay? Uh, and so they go and they, they do this, right? And uh, so then they've got a special. And people watch it. I didn't watch it. Now they go on Saturday Night Live, and I never heard of them. Mm. You know, and they got it because they had a special on a, on uh, on Netflix, for instance. Shane's also filling arenas. He's like Burt Kreischer. Like, he, he's really big. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But remember the Andrew Dice Clay filled stadiums, too. Yeah. True. <laughs> yep. And he sucked. <laughs> <laughs> so. but that, you, like, you probably, you... You've met Andrew Clay, right? Like you guys no, have. No, you, you haven't had him on. I figured you would have had him on back in the day. Like that was a character that well, the guy I had on a lot was uh, oh. Seth Kinison. Oh yeah, see, he's good. Yeah, but but Dice, uh, that was a he used to be a character of his. Like if you've ever seen that guy do John Travolta, it's unbelievable. No, here was used... here was what was wrong with Andrew Dice Clay. He wasn't a stand-up. He was an actor. Very good one, by the way. Yeah. And then he went to doing this stand-up, and he created this character. And that's all it was. I mean, he wasn't a traditional stand-up of some guy who goes out and, you know, works the clubs and then does a special on TV. He was mm -hmm. never a stand-up. He was an actor. And so what, mm -hmm. he was doing at, what he was doing on stage was acting like a comic. Mm -hmm. And I never thought he was very good. I never liked this. Guy. I never thought he was very funny. But I always liked his acting. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's the strange part about it. And he did a show a couple of years ago for uh, Showtime. And it was very good. Yeah, I saw that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was very good. Uh, was it was good. He, was, he was good, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know. But I turned Marjorie on to Robert Schimmel this weekend. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she sure. couldn't get enough Robert Schimmel. Yeah, it's great. Is that the dog comedian? Huh? Is that the comedian that, that created the dog character? No, 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 no. no. You're thinking of uh, oh. the same from, uh, who was a writer for Saturday Night Live. And yeah, sorry about that. Robert, Robert Smigel. Smigel and Smigel. Triumph, the, the dog. No, Robert Schimmel was a comedian uh, and a good friend of mine. I got to tell you, the nicest guy I've ever dealt with. When I was out of work, you know, Comedians loved me when I was working because, hey, they all want to do the Alex Bennett program, right? Mm -hmm. But when I was no longer working, how many did I hear from? <laughs> Only one that called me every time he was in town and then had Gilbert. was Robert Schimmel. Oh, I was going to say Gilbert Godfrey. No, it was Robert Schimmel. Schimmel always phoned me up. How you doing? Everything okay? You know, you all right? Come on, let's go out and have some dinner. He was terrific that way. And I always appreciated that. Uh, and uh, he lived a very sad life. He had a son who, uh, can't remember, he had some form of cancer. And he was uh, getting worse and worse and worse. And he didn't, he didn't have insurance. Because co comedians don't have insurance. There's no place to get insurance. There's no union they belong to that has insurance. So he had to constantly stay out on the road to get this kid the best kind of medical help. And this went on until the kid was, I think, 12, and then he died finally. Oh, and, it, but it was it was this it, it it was the it was a wonderful story on one end because he was always trying to, you know, take care of this kid and keep him happy and tell mm -hmm. him jokes and things like that. And mm -hmm. then he was terrible. It was terrible because it was so tragic. But he was just a, a wonderful guy. I mean, he just, his whole life was going out on the road, making enough money to take care of this kid and make sure he at least had a good shot at living. Uh, he, so he had that, okay? And then he got cancer. And then they operated on that and took care of it. And then he got some other form of cancer. And it was always one health issue after another. Then, at a point, his wife and he broke up, as he put it, because uh, he, she didn't like the fact that he had a girlfriend. Uh, that's how he puts it in his act. That, that couldn't be 
further from the truth, it turned out that he wound up falling in love with his babysitter. <laughs> and they always uh, do. They always do. They yeah. always do. <laughs> really? Does that happen? Well, then, I mean, then I should have had babies, I guess. You know, because I, I <laughs> never had anybody. Sit. And then uh, he went through a whole bunch <clears throat> of other health issues and tragedies. And if you watch him, as she saw, in various stages of his life doing his act, he was not looking well towards the end. And we didn't know, you know, how long he was going to live. In fact, he wrote a book called Cancer on $5 a Day. Uh, <laughs> and none of us knew how long he was going to live. And finally, I get a call from somebody who says, you know what happened? Robert, Schimmel's, Robert Schimmel died. And I said, the cancer finally got him, huh? And they went, no, his daughter. I said, what? He said, they were driving one day, and she slammed into a tree, and it killed him. Oh, shit. I said, what wow. a thought. You know, all these things he went through, that were that he, the bullets he was dodging. <clears throat> he got in the car with his daughter and uh, wasn't driving, and she plowed into a tree. Wow. You know, a uh, very sad life, but the funniest, I, I, Marjorie will have to agree, one of the funniest comics you will ever. Very funny. Very good. If you ever get a chance, go on YouTube, look up Robert Schimmel. That's S-H-I-M-M-E-L. Uh, and uh, his stuff is absolutely filthy. Well, <laughs> it's not really filthy. The, the, the lead up to the punchline is the dirtiest thing you can possibly imagine. <laughs> but the punchline is clean. It's a, a, a great comedian. Great comedian. So that's what Speaking I. Think. Comedians, did you guys talk about Richard Lewis last week? Yeah, I, I, you did. Well, we've t talked a lot about Richard. Yeah, yeah. You had encounters with him in San Fran? Oh yeah, I was. I knew him quite well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he would he would do the show every time he came to San Francisco. So, a lot of the uh, Letterman um, alumni are very sad about that one. Well, everybody's sad who knew him. Yeah. You know, on any level, even if they met him once, because really very nice guy, really sweet guy. And uh, he, hmm? what? what you know, gonna... I was I was going to say that I remember that he wanted like I always heard him say that he wanted credit for inventing something from hell. You know, that expression like lipstick from hell. Yeah. And they wouldn't believe him or something like the Bartlett's whatever, you know, but I remember hearing it. I remember hearing that for the first time from him. He was on Letterman and he said, well, my grandmother, she's wearing lipstick from hell. And Letterman just went crazy. Yeah. You know? So you could tell that it was, it was original. So I always felt kind of bad that he never got that credit. You, well, you know, what's interesting. I, I, I mentioned this to Marjorie and this happens all the time. If you had told me, hey, Richard, when Richard Lewis dies, how is everybody, how, how's the news going to react to it? I'd say, well, they'll mention it and that's it. Because he wasn't the biggest comedian, you know, and he wasn't the uh, most successful comedian around. You know, he had, he had some series and they were, they were moderately successful television series. Mm -hmm. One he did with Jamie Lee Curtis, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, and he, he was a funny comic, you know, but not up at the very top, you know, not on the level of a Steve Martin or a, who else could we name that were like top comics, Andrew Dice Clay, you know, uh, but he was good. He was solid. So if I felt that when he died, they'd mention it, you know, but I mean, the outpouring is just amazing. And I mean, it, it, it I don't think he would even believe it if he were alive right now, you know, because apparently enough years passed that he had an impact on a lot of people. Hmm. And I bought his memoir in 2000. I just pulled it off the shelf. Yeah. He yeah. wrote this memoir. That was pretty good. Yeah. He, I mean, he, it, it's wonderful to see. Let me put it that way. I'm not complaining about it. I just wouldn't have thought the outpouring would be this immense. And it is. And I think that's wonderful. I think it's a tribute to him and I'm, so happy that it, you know, mm -hmm. I just wish that kind of recognition could have happened while he was still alive. Cause I don't think he ever had that kind of recognition recognition. Would anybody disagree with me on that? I think he was very specific. Like he appealed to like 
being neurotic. Well, that's, I, my, that's, my audience. that's my audience. What's he doing trying yeah. to steal? It? But I, I don't <laughs> know like how, you know, that travels, you know, that, you know, New York neurotic kind of, you know, going back and forth, like my mother did, did you know, stop blaming your parents, you know, that kind of thing. Well, you know, I, the one thing about him that I guess in the very beginning made kind of turned me off a little bit. I felt he was a little close to being Woody Allen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And Woody Allen had already been well established by that time. Yes, uh, y yes, Mister Canadian. Uh, well, I totally, I totally agree with Francine. Like, um, like when you look at a guy like Jerry Seinfeld or Jay Leno in the '80s, when you picked out a stereotypical comedian, a generic comedian, you're going to put him in a cartoon or something. You made it look like Seinfeld or Leno, you know, with the the sleeves rolled up and the. Lewis was also a stereotypical comedian, I thought, with the way that he ranted his coiffed hair, the way that it was. I always thought he was a stereotypical one, but he very much so was a comedian's comedian. Jeff Altman is the same thing. When Jeff Altman goes, the same thing is going to happen. Um, very much a lot of the, the, the comics loved him. And uh, I think that that's where part of that outpouring that you're seeing is well, there are a lot of comedians who uh are comedians comedians they're they're, they're favorites of mine and some people mm -hmm. have never heard of them you know i mean i i marry i, I mentioned uh, bobby slayton to people and a lot of people don't know who he is and he's probably the best stand-up i've ever seen agreed mitch hedberg was like, oh mitch hedberg was amazing he yeah. was i know i, I like oh, yeah. Stephen Wright as well. Stephen Wright. Oh, Stephen Wright was amazing. Yeah. Was another example of and he was amazing because all it was was one liners, one right after yeah. the other. He, he was he was a poet, actually. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like that 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 idea, like uh, like in poetry you do that, you try to create images so people get it that way. And that's just what he did, you know, like you'd have to like you'd hear it and then it would take a beat. Oh, yeah, you know. Well, the best thing about Robert Schimmel, the first time I ever had him on my show, he says, you know, I've done, this was in San Francisco. He said, you know, I've done your show before. I said, you've never been here before. He says, no, I haven't been here. I was on your show in New York City. Mm -hmm. I Getting. said, where? He said, when you were WMCA. I said, that was early on in my stay in New York. Uh, uh, how did I have you on? He said, one night you had a bunch of people on. You brought a bunch of young poets on the show. Jim Carroll was one of them. Wow. I do remember. And he said, I was the other one. Wow. So I was a poet back then. He started out as a poet. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That was the one when you got fired, the protest with a couple thousand people were there, right? That was that one? Yeah. 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 Right on. Um, and, and, uh, um, you know, I mean, it, 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 it's just amazing when I go back. Sometimes I have people say to me, um, Louis Black. Oh, yeah. yeah. I had yeah. him on at uh, Sirius XM. Said to me, you know, I've done your show before. <laughs> Where is it? In San Francisco. He said, I don't remember. He says, mm. of course not. He said, I didn't scream in those days. <laughs> he said, it wasn't until I started screaming that anybody paid attention to my act. <laughs> <laughs> And and he and he wasn't the same back then. It wasn't the same act. Uh, he said somebody convinced him that if you start screaming, the comedians who laugh, who make it the biggest are the ones who scream. We got Gilbert Gottfried as an example. Kinnison. Kinnison. Uh, Kinnison. Uh, you can go on and on. Uh, uh, I had a friend, Bob, who uh, helped make his career, Bob Goldthwait, who screamed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. And I said, one of the, he said, he said, yeah. He said, so I started just using the same material, but yelling it, you know, getting irate about it. Yeah. And he said, all of a sudden, I'm a hit. You know, and I said, uh, you know, that that is always the case. So I said, especially when you're working the clubs, nobody mm. wants to follow somebody who rants. Mm. Okay. So you're going to be a headliner before you know it. They're just going to they're going to make you a headliner because nobody wants to go on after you. Mm. Not that you're Robin Williams, same thing, huh? Robin Williams, same thing. That spastic energy. Yeah, well, there, yeah. there was a spastic en energy there, and uh, you know, um, oddly enough, and it it may sound strange, I didn't find Robin Williams that funny. 
I found that his act was what we call word salad. <laughs> and and it was a kind of yeah. act that you felt you had to laugh at because it was funny, but you didn't quite understand why. <laughs> and I just felt that was a that was kind of a cheap form of comedy in my opinion. You know, hmm. uh, I always liked comedians who were wordsmiths and, you know, were, were funny because they were able to just stand there and say words, not grab their crotch hmm. or jump up and down or go crazy in fact here's a little something you might not know in the early days letterman hated uh having uh robin williams on the show mm -hmm. uh because he felt that he lost control of the show when robin came on and he didn't like that it made him feel very uncomfortable but as years went yeah. on he got to go with him and understand him and so on and so forth but in the beginning and I heard this from, I think, Shecky years ago. He did not like Robin Williams. He didn't like having him on. Yeah. The big thing about Dave is that he hated he hated surprises. Um, and, and Meryl, at the beginning of the show, loved to surprise him because of Dave's razor-sharp wit and the way that he would react to things. But he hated them so much that the balance they had to come up with was that um, there would be moments on the show that looked like they were surprises and Dave would react like they were surprises. But they weren't. Robin Williams was a loose cannon, and he yeah, just. I was always. The, I was. I was always the opposite. I always told my people who work with me, surprise me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, if it's going to something I'm not going to exactly understand, surprise me. You know, let somebody go crazy or do something, and you know, whatever. Alex, are you, are you still talking to Will Durst at all? Yeah, I call him every now and then. I was thinking about calling him today. As a matter how, of how is he doing? Uh, I don't, I always know where to get him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, he, he's, he's getting out a little bit. I mean, his wife takes oh. him out to restaurants and things like that. Oh, and good. Share, you know, and, and he writes on his Facebook page. Yeah. Oh, okay. So he's, he's the, 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 his hand is kind of working now. So it's the light. <laughs> still the problem. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. Hello, Vernon. You haven't said anything today. No, I got in here kind of late. That's all. Yeah. Well, there was something going on in Kentucky, and I can't remember what it was now. What do you, what, what kind of political thing is going oh, on? Well, of course, Mitch McConnell is leaving, right? He is stepping down as the leader of the Republicans in the Senate, but only after somebody else takes up the mantle. He, he will stay that way until November unless somebody else gets put forward, and he will finish out his term, which ends in 2026. Yeah, at least. Yeah. Just think of the money they're going to save exhuming him every morning. <laughs> <laughs> and embalming fluid's not cheap. No, it's not. By the way, I, uh, well, I think I told you one of the things that the Republican majority did in the state legislature was pass a law. They passed a law that said that um, if Mitch McConnell were to leave before his term was over, they had to re uh, they had to um, he had to uh, appoint another Republican to take his place, which is unconstitutional because of the 17th Amendment. Mm. Yeah. Well, whatever. You know, I mean, it, it, it. he supposedly he left because he just can't stand Trump. He just does, doesn't want to have to go on defending oh, his baby. Five years old or something. Huh? And he also is in favor of Ukraine uh, aid and a lot of his colleagues are not. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, you know, I mean, I, I I just decided America's gone stupid and I'm just not going to be bothered by it. You know, if Trump becomes president, then that's who you deserve, America. Yeah. Uh, Won't be any more America. Well, maybe yeah. it's America anymore anyway. You know, when you think about it, maybe people shouldn't have the right to vote because they don't vote responsibly. You know, so. Well, that's not the only ones who are irresponsible. Did you see where the... Supreme Court has taken up the immunity case. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Who could miss that one? Well, they also came down with a ruling today that Colorado was wrong, nine to nothing. Yeah, well, I agree with the Colorado thing. I agree with it because I just I just don't see that you should try to prevent somebody from running uh, like that. Uh, I, on the other hand, the immunity, the immunity thing is ridiculous. I, a president can't kill somebody and get away with it. Well, that's, the only, that's the only part. If you read the 
the, what they've agreed to, to hear, it's a very small question of all of the other things that they've already said they agree with. So the it, all that they're looking at is whether a president can be prosecuted for crimes while they're in office. That's the only part that the that they can, can, can else if they commit stands crime, from the appeal. Wait a minute. If while they commit crime, we're getting too political here, yes. but it's the yes. last two minutes of their show, so fuck it. Um, <laughs> When you, uh, you know, the immunity, uh, if, if it's, what was, what was I going to say now? What did you say? So that what I said was that they're only looking at whether a president who commits an actual crime. Oh, okay, while he, duty, yeah, but that he, can, that. but he can be there prosecuted is. for that crime after he leaves office. In other words, let's say he kills somebody, just pulls out a gun, Oval Office, kills him. Okay. Um, you can't prosecute him. Well, they're gonna they're gonna determine that, and the answer is gonna be no. He can't do that. They're gonna prosecute. Him. Mm. I hope so. All they did, the only reason they picked up the one too. issue was because they wanted to give him more time. But for example, they already have said if you commit a crime after you're president, you're not immune because they didn't take up that part of it. So they've let right. the appeal stand. Mm -hmm. So so at this point. There's one little question where the answer is obvious, but yeah. they did buy him. And the time. answer is no, you don't have immunity. Well, the answer will be. Yeah, but, you don't have but they, What they did is they they upheld their end of, hey, you appointed us. We we let you delay more. But we'll kick the can down the road. Mm -hmm. Basically. Yeah, they're not handling it expeditiously. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's fine. I just want to become president so I can kill anybody I want to. Yeah. Who, would be, who would be first on my list? <laughs> Let me hide. If you say Marjorie, we're going to revolt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I love her dearly. And if anything ever happened to her, I would be lost without her. There we go. Uh, <laughs> getting back to your comedians, you Alex. Out. Yeah. Getting back to your comedians, Alex, you talked about Bobby Slayton last week. And I looked up some of his material on YouTube. Yeah, and I had never heard of him prior to hearing you talk about it, but he is funny. He, he, he's funny. He, he, if you if you talk about stand up comedy, we're we're running over here. So if you talk about stand up I can comedy. Think of my granddaughter. Love you guys. Okay, bye bye. Okay. See you later. See. Hope we see you next week. Bye. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, um, just quickly, if if you get a chance, see Bobby Slayton. He is the purest representation of being able to do stand up. Okay, you know, yeah. I mean, he is as pure a stand up as you could possibly imagine. And the only place he ever really works well, he, he was in movies, he was in dream girls and things like that. But somehow when he was in movies, he wasn't that good an actor. Man, as a yeah. stand up, there is nobody who exemplifies what a stand up is better than Bobby Slay. As soon as I heard about Richard, I actually texted Bobby and Asked him how he was doing. He said, "I'm, I'm Len. I'm sad, but I'm well." So that I'm made sad, me feel but good. I'm well. He's sad about Richard, right? Yeah. yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Anyway, uh, hey, listen, we're, uh, we're, we're we run out of time here, boy. Mm -hmm. I love I love this. This is great. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see here. Um, we'll see you all next week about the same time. I have a doctor's appointment prior to that, so. Here we go. There we uh, go. <laughs> with this, with this, uh, with this uh, hematologist cancer guy. Yeah, yeah. So, if if yeah. I got what my doctor thinks I got, it, I it, it, I'll die of it, with it, not from it. So, you know. Anyway, uh, I I want to thank uh, uh, Charlene Solis for being here. Charlene, always good to have you here. Francine, just great to have you as a regular now. Thank you. Uh, Andrew, great to be I, hate, here. I hate every minute that you're here. <laughs> never, don't ever call this program again because you're an annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong finger. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's exactly yeah. what I mean. Okay. I got I to gotta get out of here. <laughs> what it is, he's funnier than I am, and that bothers me. Len, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Marjorie. I'll see you in a couple of minutes when we're having dinner. I have some kind of thing that was in aluminum and plastic. Uh, and <laughs> what are you eating? Your dinner.
Potato <laughs> chip. A potato chip? Oh, boy. Charlie Wallace, thank you for being here. What does the T-shirt say today? Oh, I'm just my regular science stuff. Figuring things out better. But I can't see it. From, I can't see it from here. I have to put on my glasses yeah. to read it. Science, because looking, figuring things out is better than making stuff up. That's <laughs> that's terrific. That's a good one. Uh, uh, John Ewing, good to see you here again. You were a little quiet this hour, but uh, please keep calling. We love having you here. Uh, you. Jeffrey Stein, we love having you here, as you know. Uh, Mandy O'Brien, it wouldn't be our Monday show without Mandy. <laughs> She's you good. Yeah. So goodbye, Mandy. Can she hear me? Oh, goodbye. <laughs> yep. Okay. And uh, thanks to Vernon Nunn as well. Really appreciate it, Vernon. Everybody give a big wave goodbye. Bye. And, uh, and, Bye. and Edward Berger <laughs> signs us off by saying, That's all, folks. Okay. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thanks, Alex. <laughs>